Okay, it has been about two weeks since we've been here. I am so excited to see the progress. You can actually see the upstairs now, and I'm freaking out. Let me tell you a little story about a family of four. Mom's moving too, she's moving in next door. We're going to the country to enjoy the view. The only problem is, you know, they haven't got a clue. So they're calling on a dad to build the home. Trust me when I say they can't do this alone. She's a little fancy and he's afraid of snakes. We'll find out if they have what it takes. Yeah. Here's what you've missed on Home to Homestead. My husband Michael and I left LA, had two kids, and bought a plot of land in a small Texas town. Now we're building a house on it with my dad. Oh, and my mom's moving too, but we're all coming back together to make our homesteading dreams come true. The foundation has been poured, so there's no going back. And so far, everyone's getting along. I think that covers it. Oh my gosh! We're the second story. Look how tall that is. Okay, hey dad. What's going on? Good morning, kids. We have a house that we can walk through. It's so exciting. It is. I'm freaking out a little bit. <laughs> in a good way, in a good way, but I'm a little freaking out. How do we even get in? There's a lot of. Oh, you ought to try everywhere. and go through the front door. Why don't you show us where that is? That's right. You know where your front door <laughs> is. Well, I know, but there's like a lot of lumber. And if you don't know, you got the plans in front okay, of you. Okay, let's take a look here. It's incredibly, incredibly overwhelming, honestly, to be working on something for so long on paper and then to step inside. It's so emotional to see our forever home starting to take shape. I couldn't believe how big it was. Walking around on the slab, I just couldn't see it. But now that they got the sticks up, it really gives a frame of reference and it really sets the tone for what it's gonna be. It's, it's, it's so awesome. true, yeah. yeah. One thing that blew my mind was seeing the view from the second story. I mean, having that perspective that we didn't have before, it really just took this place to new heights for me. I mean, I just, I look over, see the trees, see the valleys, the creek bed, everything was just there. And like, I wanna go down there and crack a beer and just live here forever, man. It's amazing. We knew the view was good, but we didn't know that it was this good until we got up there. It's money. The only problem is, is keeping the kids from like jumping off the second story patio. I'm a little concerned about that. We're gonna that. put a railing. I mean, they can climb railings. Yeah, everyone snuck out their second story when they're a kid. That's what I'm nervous about. Coyotes will get them. <laughs> That's what we should tell them. Yeah, right. Can we take this little wall back or is it supporting this load-bearing beam? You can take that wall completely out if you want to take that wall out. Really? The floor is held up by the LVL. What's an LVL? Well, load-bearing? No, L, not LB, LB. No, LVL. Load? No. Okay. Laminated veneer lumber. Okay. Oh. This is my guest bedroom closet. Oh. But I can't get into it. You will. So he, that hasn't happened yet. You, he he had I haven't done that yet. That's but on this Monday. See, what he's trying to do is he's trying to get as much square footage up in the air as possible. And if there's something left or something we not come quite done, he comes back it. down to do it. Okay, because right. how does he get paid? He gets paid by progress. Got it. Not accuracy. Accuracy comes later. It's just a door opening and he cuts it in, it's fine. Okay, great. Okay, so these are the two samples that you had, the masonry guy mock-up. I think we just need a heavier um, I told order. Jesus that you're gonna meet with him and you can talk about that. And I also told him, you told me that you wanted to be with the crew as they're putting the schmear on. So he said, well, What did how? he say about that? He said, how much does she charge per hour? <laughs> Do it for free, just for him. And he said, that's <laughs> fine if she wants. Tell her bring some mud boots and some gloves, and she can smear it. I I I love that. I you I'm gonna be out I, here smearing. I think he ought to be on a on a scaffold and smearing with the guys. You should I, wear heels. That'd be fun. No, I should not wear high heels. That was, that was on a budget. <laughs> we feel good about this. We'll meet with Jesus. You're on the team. I'm on. I'm I'm officially you're on hired. the masonry team. It's just a matter of you two meeting and when you're gonna start section. It's gotta be cream. I mean, yeah, we yeah, decided yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Cream. We have these weekly meetings with Builder Gary, and sometimes they go a little bit awry, you know? If Ford comes out, he turns into a five-year-old. The two of them together, like, they take it to the next level. Be careful, that's gonna fall on your head. Be careful, son. He's a handful. The other one is a mama's boy, and uh, he's just as sweet as he can be. We'll see how all that changes as they grow up. We watched the show Dennis the Menace together, and ever since that day, he's Dennis and I'm Mr. Wilson. What were you gonna throw him off the edge? Play like it. 
<laughs> You're so funny. You gotta have some fun. Okay. Ow! Hey, Did girl. you poke him with a nail? Someone's gonna get hurt. It escalates really yeah, quickly. It really does. And we actually have a rule that he's not allowed to go over to his grandpa's house unless he goes with a helmet, knee pads, and I'm starting to think of fire extinguisher. Ford is very hyperactive. And now that I think about it, I'm afraid to say that he's probably a lot like me. Do you think this is a good idea to give him nails and a two by four? Get the boy some space. Well, I think it's great um, with family being here. They're never here by themselves, so they're gonna be watched carefully by Leah and Michael and myself, granddad, which is weird to say to begin with. Ford is picking up boards and trying to nail them together. And so he's a chip right off the old block. This is why we don't. We shouldn't bring children to site meetings. Or uh, that includes you. Oh! But um. Now that the sticks are up, we finally got power, and what that means is we can use our well. So we turned that thing on. Didn't really know what to expect. I've always been on city water. These are off. Let's turn them on. Let's go for it. Let's hit some buttons. All right. Oh! Whoa. <laughs> Great success. Living in the city, we've always just turned on our water and never thought about where it came from. So now that we have a well that's pumping water out of an aquifer, aquifer? Aquifers. Aquifer. Aquifer. Yeah. 390 feet below us. Oh my god. Ah! Oh, oh, it smells like eggs. Are you serious? Ugh. Oh my god, it's horrible smelling. Turn it it's off. So green looking. Turn it off. <laughs> Dad, is it supposed to be foamy? It was pretty foul, it yellow. Was, it was it horrible. smelled like rotten eggs. It was disgusting. It was absolutely horrible, and it's actually making me rethink this whole thing. It was a very powerful smell of sulfur. I'm not really sure how the sulfur gets there, quite frankly. I, it's hard for me to answer that. R right now, it's good for irrigation. No, 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 no. No, what's wrong with you? The water's been sitting in the tank yeah. for a while. It's not gonna smell like that when I'm oh, in the shower. Dad. My dad gave us a little bit of a heads up that like we might have to like treat the water or get like a filtration system. So we were a little prepared, but you are not prepared when it smells like that. You can't bathe in that, definitely can't drink it. No. It's like a box of chocolates. You don't ever really know what you're gonna get. When you're going 400 feet down. You wanna cancel the project right now? I mean, maybe, I can't shower in that. I mean, it's pretty funky. Oh, God. It's water that you're not paying for. You get what you pay for. <laughs> exactly. Jesus. Now that we are responsible for our own water, our own land, it's really gotten me thinking more about a sustainable life. But yes, this is true. We consume a lot, and it always pains me. Every I take the trash out every week, and like it's just overflowing with plastic, you know, cardboard. I mean, it's an existential crisis, but... The more we've been learning about the waste system and where our trash actually goes and doesn't go, it's horrifying to me. And I just feel like as humans, as parents, we need to be better yeah. stewards of our planet and of our little seven acres here. And you're really taking the helm. Yeah, I gotta give her credit, you really have. Thanks. Yeah. I'm determined to make a difference. So as I started noticing how much food scraps were being just trashed, I decided we've got to do something about this. Started researching it and I have gotten into vermicomposting, which is composting with... It's German for worm forms. Worms, <laughs> yeah. Red wigglers to be exact. <laughs> I mean, that's what they said to you. So. Red wigglers. Vermicomposting is basically a biological garbage disposal. So all of our kitchen scraps, instead of going in the trash, the idea is that it goes in your worm bin, the worms eat the kitchen scraps, and then they create what is called, in the vermicomposting world, black gold, which is essentially just worm poop. Black gold. Well, it's amazing. They say it's amazing. <laughs> and it apparently is incredible for the plants. I read an article in National Geographic that told me all how to do it, so I set it up one afternoon, and it seemed really easy. So I thought, God, why doesn't everybody do this? And then, <laughs> all right, we are checking on the worms in their little uh, bucket home that I made them. Let's see how this is going. <laughs> they died. Oh, no, I think some of them- killed the worms. Some of them survived. Well, it turns out that the worms need much more than just food scraps in a bucket. They need a certain amount of soil. They need oxygen, which nobody told me about. But yeah, hmm. so it's just time to try again, I guess. 
It's been really successful. I started out with 500 worms and it's time to expand to an even bigger bin because my worm herd has grown. I find worm eggs in there all the time and I'm so into it. <laughs> Who knew? I didn't see this for myself, I'll tell you that. It seems like every day something new is happening over here. I showed up to the house one day and the house was wrapped in all this weird white paper and I have no idea what it's for, but thank God for Builder Gary. It's called a house wrap. It's a heavy nylon product that if you try to pull on it, it's not gonna tear. It's sturdy and its purpose is to create a membrane between the OSB wind bracing plywood on the outside of the house and the back of your masonry. It's a buffer between the two building products. That's a horrible answer, but that's what it is. Being parents, I have to bring the kids out to the site every now and again. And a job site is the worst place to bring children. Lord, what are you doing? We brought toys out. Like they, never, they never use them. They're like cats. You buy all this expensive cat stuff and the cat just wants to lay on your bed or sit on your newspaper. Just like, the toys are just right there. They're not, they haven't been moved. I haven't like heard weeks. that before. That's so true. Yeah. And when you want love from them, they're nowhere to be found. And then they wake you up in the middle of the night. <laughs> You're like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Despite all the dangers here at the job site, we try and involve the kids when we can in projects around the house. So we got some wildflower seeds and decided that we would try and reseed our backyard area. Yeah, I really had this nostalgic, quixotic Americana moment in my head. We'd take them out here in the back and we'd spread the native wildflower and the wild seeds in the back. A really Woody Guthrie, this land is your land, this land is my land. But there, it, there's a string you pull and it's supposed just to just quickly. It. I want to go. Okay. You're going to be okay. No. All right, here, give me your hands. No, I want to go. Mommy, Mommy, I want to go. go. Hey, All right, let's do the, let's do the LeBron. I want to go. Here. Do you want to spin some seeds? No, I want to go. It was not a yuck. I've been sort of barely keeping up with everything that we've been tasked to do and decisions to be made. And then all of a sudden, dad said that I needed to have all of my plumbing fixtures selected before framing is done, which is basically right now. Leah is a little bit flustered at times because I don't think that she realize how many decisions that you have to make on a custom home. The first decision that we always need is to be able to get what plumbing we're gonna put in there. So I have spent the last three or four days not sleeping, working around the clock, trying to design our bathrooms so that we can pick out the plumbing fixtures so that I can get the correct valves that go into the wall. Yeah, but how? We don't even know what the room's gonna look like yet. Exactly. My first order of signature hardware has arrived and I am just checking to make sure that everything I ordered is here. Quick connect drop in drain kit, which I have absolutely no idea what that is, but I'm sure that we need it. We do need it according to dad. This has all been a real big learning process for me. You know, I'm doing my best, okay? I've never done this before. Truthfully, I don't think that the plumbers are very happy with me right now, and I'm not sure how Builder Gary feels about it. There was parts that were missing. There was tubs that were damaged. There was a drain hole in the wrong place. But other than that, she'll get it worked out. I may have completely messed up the plumbing fixtures, but the windows are fire. They look good. You, they look you did a heck of a job. I'll tell you what, they look really good. But then, you know, there's bound to be something that goes wrong. And it did. We showed up at the job site and our mudroom was flooded. I am draining the swimming pool in the utility room. I'm hoping that by this time next year, we'll have it all drained out. The bigger issue is making darn sure that this roof is dried in before the rain gets here. Because I don't want to do this again. Like, like <laughs> inches of yeah, water. Yeah, was walking on that nasty... Black water. It was nasty. Yeah. But somebody See, had to, someone had to clean it out, so 
<laughs> Call better Gary. No, I rolled up my sleeves and got in there. Oh, you did? Yeah, you didn't see that? <laughs> no. How do you think all With the water? What? A bucket? <sighs> Unfortunately, the opening where the Dutch door is supposed to go and the cold fronts that were coming in, they were lined up perfectly. So every time it would rain, it would go in that door. So I have an idea, and the idea is I'm gonna plywood right over them. It just had a little bit of water in it, and the dog really kind of appreciated it when he got thirsty and he got some water. So I thought it worked out pretty good. I think there was a part of him that just liked watching me suffer, like shoveling. I felt like I was like on like a sinking ship, shoveling buckets of water out. It's teaching you. Every day is a lesson. So it won't flood in the future, but the pavers will be amazing. It'll be all worth it in the end. The next big decision we have to make is exterior selections. So stains for our porches and our paint color for our stucco. The paint color is super easy. I've known the paint color for a while. What well, white? Yeah, it's just, it's a white. Okay. The stain is really very challenging. Like, I, I'm actually shocked how challenging stain is. It kept you up a few nights. Here's the stain color so far. This is not going as well as I thought it would. Gray, too gray. Too red. Too dark. Getting a little bit better over here. The exterior paint color was done just like that. She knew exactly what she wanted. This house has got a bunch of fur and cedar on it. It's got a lot of stain. I think she went through 12 different shades and couldn't quite figure it out. I thought that she was gonna have a nervous breakdown. Looks pretty dark on the cedar, but looks less dark on the pine. And this is with two coats. So maybe I can get away with one coat. Oh, this is so hard. I'm not really thrilled with any of them, and I don't know what to do. Should I just paint them instead of stain them? All the stains are turning out really dark, or green, or gray. Nothing's right. I honestly don't even know what to do. Dad's been a champ through this whole process, but when it comes to this stain issue, he's so over it. He's so over me, and it's the first time in this project where he's threatened to fire me. Well, that would be kind of hard to do, because she's under contract with River Hills Homes. I've called my dad a lot about the stains. It wasn't even a tiff, it's just, I think he was just fed up with the phone calls about the stain. I mean, his defense, you call him morning, noon, night, he gets no respite from his job, but I mean, you are his daughter. We are bonding. It was an idle threat to be able to try to get that infamous stain color. This is a pick your battle moment. They have those moments in building too, and I might just need to let this go pick a stain and move on. Like, I'm tired. But you're gonna win the war. This house is gonna be great. It's just a little thing you gotta just... Let go and let God. Let go and let Gary. Let go and let Gary. <laughs> ah, we need t-shirts. I think that Leah is learning quickly that the decisions that she's making is in just to get the outside and the inside of the house kind of pulled together. There's a lot of stuff up front you have to take care of. Once you get a you know, some of your interior selections done, it's all downhill from there. But um, the exterior is a show place for them. They're trying to create this home that's been here for a hundred years. And so they're, they're striving very hard to get it right, get it right the first time. So it's a work in progress, they're learning. And the next one she does, I assure you, she will be far and away better. She ended up coming up with a very light stain and talk to the painter and the application, and I think it's gonna turn out okay. Thank God I've got dad, but I do still have to ask him for one special request when it comes to the cabinets. One thing I wanna do in there, and I, you get to tell me what you think. So, the worm bin, my worms, for that You've I've- You've got to be kidding me. You want a worm door? Well, it's not really a door. Like a doggy door for no. your worms? No, my, the issue is, <laughs> no, just hear me out. It's actually a really good- I'm trying. Okay. In the extreme summer and the extreme winter, when it's super hot here, it's super cold, the worms have to come inside. So I'm trying to figure out where to put their bin. So can we like hollow out a part of the cabinetry, like underneath where their bin, it's a 25 gallon bin where it like just shoves under the cabinet. Do you like being in the dark? Yes, that's the whole thing, they're worms. You know, I've never had anybody ask me this before. Look, it's very environmentally friendly, 
and they are basically a biological garbage disposal. Why don't you put them in the garage? You've got to get a cooling method. So I'm going to run AC for the worms? <laughs> You see what I'm saying? It's a conundrum. It's... <laughs> okay. Saves me money on cabinet drawers. Back to the drawing board. Anyways, you get it. Okay. Guess we're going to build a place for the worms. It's a family affair. Up until now, if someone has had a question, they can just reference the architect's plans. It's all right there. But now we're shifting into the design phase of this project. All decisions, all questions, all answers have to come through me. And it's a bit overwhelming. I'm looking at this project going, oh my God, I have no idea. I'm tired already. And I'm starting to think that I might need some help. Okay, what's next? I don't know. I still gotta get the plumber here because the tub that was backwards in the faucet that wasn't here. So the plumbers have gotta come back. Right. The electrician had stripped all of his wire. He's gotta come back. We moved the door for your mother. So then the AC guy's gonna come back because he's gotta move the AC drain. Yeah. All right. Kelly hadn't finished all the low voltage. That's five things right there just to get this thing ready for formal inspections. There's a third party inspector. What? that comes through this house. When? And he comes and he looks at all of our stuff. And I like to bring him in here when I'm gonna pass, not when I'm gonna fail. Oh, good Lord. Okay, that's a lot of things. But don't my windows look good? <laughs> they look so good. Yes, they are very nice windows. It's so good. All right, I got a lot of work to do. In reality? Yeah. Go see Jesus. I'm going. I think the project is behind schedule, but I think the project is coming along nicely. We're just pulling in some loose ends and we're ready to insulate. It's on you. You're feeling good about that though? Yeah, I mean, That's it's looking good. good. The house is looking great. I'm excited about the kitchen, my office, studio. And well, I mean, it's the simple things. We've got a fireplace in the bedroom. I'm happy about that. Keep us cozy doing those cold Texas nights. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> All in all, it's gonna be a gorgeous, amazing place to live when we get to live here. Let me tell you a little story about a family of four. Mom's moving too, she's moving in next door. We're going to the country to enjoy the view. The only problem is, you know, they haven't got a clue. So they're calling on the dad to build the home. Trust me when I say they can't do this alone. She's a little fancy and he's afraid of snakes. We'll find out if they have what it takes. Yeah. Hey everybody, Builder Gary here. There are a few things that you need to think about at the very beginning of the process. Things that could in fact hold up this build if you don't take care of it at the beginning. The first thing any builder is gonna need, is gonna need to be able to have a master tub selection. I know that seems strange, but it's got a, a number of different configurations on a drain, and that ties in to the plumbing before the foundation is even poured. Master tubs are gonna come with drains on either end, they're gonna come with a drain in the middle, they're gonna come with a freestanding. How does that tub sit into that floor plan needs to be known at the very beginning because the plumbing has to drain somewhere. So this is a key item that you need to know right off the bat. While you're at it, you might as well go ahead and consider doing what your shower valves and the fixtures that go in the wall. Might as well go ahead and do all that at the same time. The next thing that you need to consider because the length of time it's taking to get windows now is the style of the window, the color of the window, and the function of the window. Look at the plan that you're considering or that you have and make sure that you agree with each and every window. If it opens up, opens up this way. Is it cranked? Whatever. Get all of the window issues dealt with at the very, very beginning. Because once I order a window, there's no taking them back. Lastly, and equally as important, is getting your exterior colors done. It's imperative that you pull your outside together, color coordination, 
and all of that will take you a little bit of time. So get started at, at, with that at the very beginning. The things that I'm, I'm referring to is going to be the exterior paint, the exterior stain, is there stucco, is there brick or stone? There's five things. Focus on those at the very beginning. Need to get all that stuff done up front because that's gonna go on right after that framer has gotten all those walls up and is finishing the frame on it. They're gonna be wanting to put samples up for you to look at. You can't look at a little swatch and expect for it to look the same when it gets out into the field and it's big and massive and it's in the sun or it's not in the sun. You gotta click off those th three things right off the bat to give them a run and start out the gate to help you in the building of the house. I know there's a lot that goes into a new build, but remember, if you're going to build it, build it the right way.